there. Making bacon. Making bacon, absolutely. Yes, indeed. Do you know why I'm putting these glasses on? Oh, I, it's hard to tell why you do. Because the other night you and I were recognized so many yes. times at the gospel sing, for those of you who think we're heathens. Right. But I also want you to see what's written on the side of them. Where are we? Who, who's getting it? You well, are, Jim? Number three is getting it. Number, number two. There, if you'll stop look directing me Johnson, on TV. I think we'll get it. Uh -huh. Look for me on TV. <laughs> Oh, too much. Yes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Larry and I went to the Bill Gaither and Friends concert. It's true. Uh, we Saturday have witnesses, night. hundreds of witnesses who came by and it said hello It was unbelievable. Another yeah. unbelievable thing was I picked up the tickets at the Civic Center, and they came in a Calvin Klein envelope <laughs> that had a sniff strip in it. It was just outrageous. <laughs> Women decorously laid out over a table, and... Mm, mm, mm men undressed and it was just terrible you know this calvin klein is a little racy for bill gaither but they i guess they had the envelopes left and they had to use it speaking of you calvin, got a thread hanging on your glasses speaking of calvin the witch oh <laughs> i bet you didn't know the witch had a name <laughs> well it's not calvin here oh okay says here Mighty dark in here. Oh, don't. take your glasses off. Oh, oh, okay. I'm You'll get bacon grease on them anyway. Dear young men, ooh, ooh, I haven't had anybody call me that for roughly 20 years. I am 75 years old and I can't make a biscuit. Every time I try to make one, they come out like little lumps of concrete. This reminds me of Tootsie's biscuits. Uh -huh. She was a great bread baker, but all of her biscuits came out of those things that you break open, the bust open, you know, from the store. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? I'm afraid Big Billy, my current husband, will b divorce me if I don't learn soon. Big Billy says he just don't feel right if and he don't get a holt of a biscuit in the morning. Thank you kindly, Big Mama Hoback of Lockjaw, Texas. <laughs> What's the oh, name? Well, we'll do well we are going to do biscuits. And I'll tell you, folks, this is, this is the honest to God truth. Larry and I, neither one can make a biscuit. I have never made a decent biscuit. My grandma, the scene it. Connie Hodges Bond made them three times a day, many days during Well, the that's winter. the problem. People don't make them enough. You've got to make practice. them a lot. You've got to practice. And if you don't do that, you just don't do mm -hmm. it. Although Mr. Johnson has shown me his, and they are right impressive. I am impressed. Well, I want to show them something. Now, I know you're not going to say anything about this, but I just think this is wonderful. And give me that other piece there, too. Well, you? this was my mama's I rolling know pin. I knew you were going to say that. Tootsie, now, you know, I got hers, and, uh -huh. and hers are, are red here. And I'll bring it in occasionally. And then here's a nice little, I'll bet that's an antique, too. It is. It belonged cup. to my uh, late Aunt Rowena. Well, a tough cookie, and it was an her. antique because she was an antique herself. Well, I'm glad to see you got something. <laughs> uh, it's a private joke. Anyway, it isn't very funny either, I might add. Uh, well, we're going to do, even Doris is tickled about oh, that. Wait a minute, before we do it, we've what? been waiting to do this all oh, yes. season. Yes, yes. And they, they just now, they're so humble around here, they just now got ready to do it. We thought that we should show you who all these people are that we talk about behind the scenes the gum so, crackers the sneezers yes. the scratchers so we finally are. sent a camera out and that's, that's big jim hammerstrom that has the uh, bubble gum well it looks the like that they if they were really important they could have put their names on uh -huh. it now he goes twirling out and now and that's, there's uh, a gertrude that, no no is it that's his <laughs> no no wait a minute <laughs> that that is that robin robin reed and there's Susanna. <laughs> 
Oh, Susanna. Uh-huh. Won't you cry for me? She looks real pretty. Robin is natural. an intern with us, yeah. and there's Andre Burris, who wrote the music that you hear. And he's also way up above us. Whenever uh, you see a, a startling overhead the witch shot, boy. and he's also the great sneezer in the bunch. Uh -huh. Whenever you hear a lot of sneezing going on, and then way back in the room that's behind That's Mike us. Christmas Carol. That's Mike Carol. That's right. right. Look he's at him. Sound, he actually, sound technician. Well, he looks like he knows what he's doing, and but he, he really does. He usually does. does. And then, oh, uh, Miss Carol, Carol, the lovely Miss Carol, who is uh, oh, look at that, she's shocked. Uh, she's been with us for years. She punched up a camera, and there she was. Uh huh. And now and there back, we're us. back to us. I think that's real clever too, uh -huh. the way she, you know, yeah. did the little thing there, joystick. Well, anyway, and this is us. And then so you've met uh, Doris. You... We'll make Harold come out after a while. Yeah. Harold's going to come out with Doris today. That's all right. Now, I, let me just tell him what I'm going to do, and then you can take it from there, because mine is real easy. Oh, okay. These are called Snow Biscuits, and they were sent in by Dolores Snow. Oh, come on. I, I'm not kidding, of Ewing, Virginia. So these are Dolores's Snow Biscuits. Well, it's a good thing her name wasn't and Dolores Nutley. We take uh, two cups of flour and add uh, self-rising flour, and you add a cup of heavy I'm gonna need a plate. whipping cream and mix that all together. And that's the whole recipe, folks. Huh? Let me go over it again. Two cups of flour and a uh, container, eight ounce container of whipping cream. That's all. And make sure you use a flour that's suitable for biscuits. Uh, if you look in your grocery store, you'll see biscuit flour in most places in the country. And uh, this is self-rising biscuit flour. So. If you do that, I'll go on and, and take it from there while Larry does a lot of complicated stuff. Well, this is an interesting recipe, and I like it an awful lot. I don't make good biscuits, and today my biscuits are all just as tall as they were when I cut them. <laughs> Thank heavens I cut them real thick. But I had some of them yesterday, and they're not the prettiest things in the world, but... Uh, you know, they're still real good. Uh, mine is uh, bacon cornmeal biscuits, and I'll tell you, they have a wonderful texture to them. The first thing, obviously, that you have to do, interesting, this recipe, because it has bacon uh, crumbled up in it, Ooh. and it also has just a little bit, just a touch of red cayenne pepper and a little bit of brown sugar. Don't you mm. think that's interesting? Johnson was talking about uh, what you, you get we, we all three of us, they have different brands of cornmeal and, and uh, biscuit mix and flour. It's very important that you start out with, with fresh ingredients. And so even though this is not the most cost-effective way of going about buying this, I, I frequently buy it in this tiny size because you want to keep it fresh. I would rather go to the grocery store more often and buy these and keep them fresh than just go once in a while and have them go bad on me. So this thing starts out, you start out by mixing your first four ingredients. I gotta watch my bacon here. I got it turned up right high. You gotta get it real crisp because you're gonna have to uh, crunch it all up into little crunchy things and be very careful. I'm poking around on this no stick with a fork and I know there will be no stick fork people who will write letters and just get over it. Okay, you start out with the first four ingredients. And here's something that Mr. Johnson has taught me in 17 years on cooking cheap. He has taught me to use these I have pins. hundreds of Tootsie's old clothes pins. Never knew what to do except put them on my nose when I was cooking. But now I've discovered a whole new way <laughs> of handling this. You start out with the uh, dry ingredients first. One and a quarter cups of self-rising flour. One and a quarter cups. And... Uh, People are running all just scurrying. I, I fear that I have done a poor job of telling uh, the help what I needed. In you know, isn't it nice to know that at, <laughs> at the age of 113, Doris can run that I fast. wish you could have seen her go across. And Harold, too, both of them foxtrotting across the studio. Okay, <laughs> one and a quarter cups of self-rising flour. Put you right about there. Boom and a cup of self-rising cornmeal. And that cornmeal gives this such an interesting flavor and, and consistency. And you know, we have so many consistency fanatics around here. Johnson won't eat beans because the consistency's bad. And I have a friend that practically won't eat anything, including lobster meat, because it has a strange, grainy consistency. I don't know what it is with people and food consistency. Never has bothered me too much at all. I'm going to turn that off because I think it's right about where we need for it to be. That's two ingredients. Then with, to that, we need to add a tablespoon of brown sugar. 
sugar. Oh, I fear this stuff has gotten hard on me. How much? A tablespoon. I'm going to add this little. That was not a completely full. How one. much was that? That was one tablespoon of brown sugar and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, red pepper. Ooh. And I don't have an eighth here, but I'm, I'll tell you, it's about that much. Not much. Just a little bitty thing. And what you do then is just take that and stir it around and get it all stirred up real good. All your dry ingredients should be stirred thoroughly before you start doing anything else. It would be a good idea, by the way, at this point, to put your to have your margarine setting out so it softens up a little bit. And uh, it, we're going to, here in a couple of minutes, add all of our, our other ingredients to it. Johnson. All right. Now, I've mixed up my flour, my two cups of flour, and my cup of whipping cream into this bowl and it's right crumbly but I'm going to dump it out onto this floured surface right now we'll get rid of the bowl we don't need you anymore Mr. Bowl and we're going to grab all no, of this no, 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 into wrong. a lump. No, I looked uh, under, it, it was Mrs. Bowl. Oh <laughs> give me a break. All right now you get it in a big lump a big white and you have to knead it ten times so I'm going to knead it and two. And knead, it, and knead it some more. Three. Oh, Lord, I may have to get doors coming. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have to knead Four. it every hour? Uh, <laughs> five. Uh, Doris thinks six, I'm funny. Uh, Johnson thinks I'm mildly amusing. Seven. And the camera crew doesn't get me at all. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Oh, all right. That's You're seven, tired? Eight. Well, do you need a stand-in kneader? No. Where's that stand-in kneader? Nine. Just needer? one more, and I'll be... Oh. That's about all I can take with my bad heart. Bless Thank your you so heart. Much. And I mean that literally, bless your heart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, now when you get it to this size wide and you kneaded it ten times, you roll it out and, folks, you start in the middle and roll to the outside. And Larry, I'm, it's going to take me a while to roll this out, so if you've got anything you want to uh, show I was folks. Diddling. Now, I have taken my bacon off. Taken my bacon, bacon off. back off. And see, that's real crumbly. Let it cool just a little bit, and we'll crumble it all up, and you've got to crumble it real fine, because you don't want to get somebody to get a big old piece of that and put their false teeth out with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson, I'd be real careful. He does not have false teeth. But I think he does have a couple that are unreal. <laughs> so I don't want to put oh. those things out. Now, the next thing we need to do is to cut in our margarine, and it calls for about three tablespoons. Wouldn't you say that's about three tablespoons, sir? Doris is dubious. She's not sure. She says from where she is, it looks about like three tablespoons. Does that look like three tablespoons, dude? Would you know three tablespoons yeah, if you saw it? Two and a half or three. This thing has teaspoons on it, but I can't figure out how many teaspoons go into a tablespoon. Four. Three. Three? There are three teaspoons. Well, that's, that looks to be about that many. So when we take that and cut it in to there, I'm going to cut this and literally cut it in because I want to cut these into smaller pieces. And then I'm going to I'm going to crumble it all up with my hands at this point. You just can't avoid getting in there with your hands. Are you figuring that out, Doris? Well, oh, well, mine doesn't have it that way. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> Thank you, Doris, for making a complete fool of me. <laughs> I appreciate it. I couldn't find it. I don't know what. Perhaps it was my glasses that I didn't have on at the time, which I have, you'll notice, have never worn on the air. <laughs> but if we make it to another season, Johnson and I, uh, I will have to wear them the yes. next time. I promise you that right now. Now, what you got to do is get this down to sort of a crumbly consistency. So just sort of run it through your fingers and work it all the way through there and in a couple minutes we'll put uh, all of the liquid in. Johnson, go ahead. Okay, well now I'm taking Rowena's uh, biscuit cutter and you can buy these at any good department store or you can use a jar or a tin can now just, or a glass. Just think of Rowena when you're cutting. Oh, I am. Ah. <laughs> and you, you lay them out and they're a, a little less than a half an inch thick. And this is all you do. You just cut them out, and we're going to put them on a pan eventually. What is Doris doing back there? She makes me so nervous because she just knows she's up to no good. She's getting ready for her new TV show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she hasn't told us about it yet. 
she's practicing in the background while we're not looking. And I understand it's better if you don't twist, just push down and pull them out, and there it is. It falls out, and here the biscuits are, and you're going to bake them at 450 degrees. That's a right quick oven for 10 minutes. And I will show you in just a minute. Oh, now you got the flour all over me. Now, you know what you do with the scraps. You mix them all up, and then you pat them out, and you put sugar and butter and cinnamon on it and roll it up into a roll. So that's, that's what you do, and I don't have enough time to do it today. And then you put them in the oven, and let me pull them out. Oh, you caught me trying to do something oh, here. Here they are, just as pretty as a picture. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they are. I've never seen you make biscuits. Why don't you make biscuits that good when I come to I don't house? know. I hey. guess I've just lost the energy. You've lost the energy and lost the touch. It. At this point now, I need to add all my liquids plus my bacon. That's a half a cup plus three tablespoons of buttermilk, and they're just real severe about it. Half a cup plus three tablespoons. There's the half a cup, and then here comes the three tablespoons. And believe it or not, you really do need it. One, two, and a half. I better be a little careful if I overdo it. Toots used to call that drown in the miller. Where's my fork? Drown in the miller. Yeah, as in the miller, mm -hmm. the, the guy that mills the oh, yes. stuff. You know, they used to make these things at mills <laughs> back in the old days. So we're going to add all that, and I think that's all the ingredients. Uh, and I also will need, as soon as I get this where it needs to be, the right consistency. I may have to add just a little bit of buttermilk. This is buttermilk, by the way. Did I tell you that? Did I say it was buttermilk? It comes from a buttermilk cow. There are only a few of them left in the world, a buttermilk cow. While I'm doing this, why don't we go to the Cook Sisters? Oh, that's a good idea. And uh, then we'll are review they here some today? recipes. Yes, they okay, are here. Good. Absolutely, they are. I'm going to add some, uh, I'm going to crumble up my bacon. Oh, the, the Cook, Cook Sisters, Sisters couldn't, couldn't make it. Couldn't no, they couldn't it. make it for the last well, show. They said they didn't want to appear with all that other gang. Uh, so anyway, well, why don't you review your recipe, Josh? Oh, you already have. I already you? have. Well, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about any of this. Well, just take I can't time. do that in this, too. So I need to add just a wee little tiny bit more. Not much. Just a wee little bit. I'm working this into the right consistency now. And you don't want to mess with it too much. You mess with it too much, you're in trouble. Why don't you read my recipe while All I'm right. getting this I'll where it needs to go? To. So we uh, can get one thing out of the way. Of course, I don't have my glasses. So <laughs> this is really sad. Hey. This and. Now we'll you need to, to dust off uh, your area right. so that you Bacon, roll it out. Bacon cornmeal biscuits. One and a quarter cup self-rising flour. One cup of self-rising cornmeal. One tablespoon brown sugar. One eighth of a teaspoon of ground red pepper. One uh, or three tablespoons of margarine. Three slices of bacon fried and crumbled. One and a half cups plus three tablespoons of buttermilk. All right. And... Uh, two teaspoons of self-rising flour, and vegetable cooking spray. And that's all the ingredients there are. Okay, here we are. I have rolled this out, and using the stand-in <laughs> Laban Aunt Rowena oh. cookie thing, I have to do the same thing. At this point, I have to take a no-stick. Where is it? I have to take I have it backwards. And pour a little bit of, bless your heart, we finally got a sneeze out of someone else on the staff today. And uh, spray that real good. Heat up your oven to 400 degrees. It's only going to go 15 minutes. And this yields 15 big biscuits. And as you can see, these are mighty pretty. Mighty, mighty lovely. And move them pretty fast. I'm only going to put four in there. I don't have time to mess with anything else. Well, I don't know. Maybe I can get all of them in there. Let me try. Mine did not yield as many as they say it should. What does that mean, Mr. Johnson? I don't know. Didn't you're, begin you're, they're to They're rolled yield. out mighty thick. <laughs> well, it says roll them out. Uh, a half inch thickness. Well, that's you got about an inch thick there. Well, sorry about that. But anyway, I need to put this under the broiler, and I'll be right back. That's it for me. Uh, do something. Uh, 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 well, let me have Aunt Rowena's. Uh, if you don't mind. Let's get cut uh, her back, because I don't want her to come back and haunt either one of us. Well, if you move she over. She haunted on. us while she was alive. Really oh, here is Dora. <laughs> 
The very lovely Doris is coming in. Come on in here, Doris. How you doing? Nice to see you. Welcome. Hi. Oh, where's Harold? Harold, get Come on. We got to get Harold in here too. We got to get the other three quarters in here. You notice I didn't say your other here. half. <laughs> How you doing, Harold? You know, Harold, you put up with a lot, don't you? No, really. But she's a wonderful lady, isn't oh, yeah, she? she? What would we all right. do without her? I'd be lost. <laughs> I would really, probably be dead. We'd be lost without <laughs> Harold, too. He sits behind the cameras and helps us out. Thanks a lot. All right. I had to do a pumpkin scone today, Ooh. and it took two, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of sugar, a half a cup of mashed pumpkin, one egg well beaten, a half a cup of milk, and two and a half cups self-rising flour. And you cream your butter and sugar, you add your pumpkin, add the eggs, add your milk slowly, add your flour, and knead lightly on a floured board. And it is very sticky. The dough is very sticky. And, and you bake it in the oven in fact, for 20 still minutes. There's a little bit of it stuck to really? it. Really? <laughs> and it's a, it's a very, it doesn't look like a regular biscuit because these are scones. And scones are... Uh, More like an English muffin. Yeah, and, and it's a firmer thing. And you usually use it for tea, if we had some tea here or something. And this is, has a very mild taste. We tried them yesterday while they were warm. And I think you could still put butter and jelly or something on them, even though they have pumpkin. And uh, we thought they were quite good. Well, do they and taste like pumpkin or do they taste very, like it's, biscuits? It's, it's a, a mild pumpkin taste. It's not overpowering. I thought it would be very overpowering, but it's not. It's very good. And how many does it yield? And, uh, well, I have about tw uh, 14 of them in here. Hmm. And I cut them small because with a scone, you don't want them too big, I didn't think. You know, it's more like a tea type thing. If you roll the mm. scraps of mine out, it would serve maybe eight, mm. eight or ten biscuits. Mm -hmm. Well, if I had done mine just a little thinner, <laughs> perhaps I could have gotten more than the six <laughs> out of it. But anyway, bye. Uh, Phil. All right. Well, I need to get mine out the oven because I warmed them up. Larry put his under the broiler. I did indeed, and it's going to be a while until they come well, out. Well, you know, It'll that's It'll be about right 15 thing. or 20 minutes. I hope you all got a little time, do you? Did I review mine? Oh, you reviewed yeah, I, mine. Yeah, I did it for you. I'm oh, so the boy is such I a mess I don't know what to do with myself. It's terrible. Really well, let me get mine out of the oven. I come from a long line of great bread makers. Bread, not biscuits. And there's a very big difference. Here in the South, if you don't eat biscuits, you may as well just move. Because everybody down here eats biscuits. It wasn't until I came. Actually, we didn't even eat an awful lot in northern Virginia. I didn't really start eating a lot of biscuits until I came down here. And we have some mighty fine biscuit-making places here in the south. I'll just tell you that right now. How are they looking, Johnson? Well, look Beautiful. at them. He has done it again. Oh, that's the same ones he put in a while uh -huh. ago. Yes. Well, they are pretty, and they have risen up mighty fine. Mighty well, fine. I'm going to take them over to the table along with my well, I may as well cup get these of water. Out. I may as well get these out. But as you can see, mine are just huge. They're just enormous. Fat I certainly hope that we can eat those. But they are pretty. I mean, they really are real pretty. Did I was you bring just some jelly? A little bit on the top. Did you bring some jelly? She has, has forgotten to bring the jelly. Do we have butter over here? Yes. I certainly hope so. And, oh! Biscuits, biscuits, biscuits. Here, have some butter. Thank you. You know, my legs are just hurting today. I think it's going to rain tonight. Have you ever seen more beautiful biscuits in your life in one spot? Now, these really are pretty. They're, they're sort of small, but they are pretty, and they are very, very flavorful. Now, stop <laughs> laughing. You know I can't make a biscuit. I try. This is the biggest biscuit I've ever made, this one right here in the middle. And I think it's because I cut it two inches thick. <laughs> Compared to Mr. Johnson's... <laughs> His, in fact, could could eat my biscuit, as you can see. There, <laughs> old cold biscuits. Let Take an old cold scone. biscuit and wait. <laughs> well, you've got to try the scone. Oh yeah. And I'll try yours. I've already tried mine. You know, I'm mine was it's a great recipe. mine was delicious when they were hot. Mm -hmm. Biscuits don't hold. No, they you, don't. You, you got to eat them right out of. There's no way you can prepare them in advance. What do you think of that scone? Scone is good. Mmm, your biscuit is wonderful. Well, I think... That's be, a good basic biscuit. It would be a lot better if it was uh, hot. Oh, well, of course. And, and if we had out. some other stuff. You tried mine yet? Mm, no. Were well, you avoiding it? Mm-hmm. He's afraid he's going to crack a tooth on one of those bacon things. That's real bacon in there, folks. Tastes mighty well, good. Well, I just want a little pinch. I don't want it to stop up the last remaining oh, artery in my heart. Sake. I was with you Saturday night on the way to the gospel setting. I don't think that little wad's going to hurt you any worse than what you had Saturday night. 
No, actually, he had seafood. He behaved himself. What do you think of that? The seafood was wonderful. <laughs> Oh, you mean the biscuit? The biscuit is good, too. Pizza. The biscuit, I think, would have been better if you'd cut it thicker or thinner. Well, then they would have only been a half inch thick. Well, I... Because they didn't rise. Now, why didn't they rise? Everything was fresh. You, well, I don't know. You know, when you buy that flour from that store you've been no, getting it at, no, it no. might have been on the shelf for three years. No, no. Because I was going to make this, I went to one of the the highfalutin stores that oh. turns over their stuff real fast. I didn't go to that low-down store that I usually go to. Well. But anyway. Well, I think they're all good biscuits. They are, and you would be well advised to use fresh ingredients, that is the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, come back sometime when you can have biscuits. And <clears throat> we'll see you the next time on Cooking Cheap, and write to us if you can. Bye.